This is going to be our third and final lecture for Module 5. In this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at overcurrent protection requirements as specified in Article 240. So our objectives for this lesson, we're going to identify the different parts of Article 240, identify when the next larger overcurrent protective device may be selected versus when the next size down must be used, list overcurrent protection requirements for flexible cords and cables, Use table 240.6a to determine size of overcurrent protective devices and list where tap rules are found. And our definitions for this lecture are overcurrent. Any current in excess of the rated current of equipment or the impacity of a conductor, it may result from an overload, short circuit, or a ground fault. Starting off here at Article 240, overcurrent protection. Article 240 provides general requirements for overcurrent protection. Once again, we see this general uh, phrasing with it being uh, found in chapters one through four of the NEC. And it's separated into nine parts, those being part one general, part two locations, part three enclosures, part four disconnecting and guarding, part five plugs, fuses, fuse holders, and adapters, part six cartridge fuses and fuse holders, part seven circuit breakers, part eight supervised industrial installations, and part nine overcurrent protection over 1000 volts nominal. So article 240 is one of the most detailed and long articles in the NEC. It's not quite as long as article 250 when we went over it, uh, but it is very detailed. However, what we see here is that parts one through four of Article 240 kind of provide just general information about all forms of overcurrent protection. But then we see parts five, six, and seven provide specific information about specific types of overcurrent protection, and parts eight and nine provide specific requirements for specific scenarios of overcurrent protection, those being, you know, in this specific supervised industrial installation and uh, that being when we have over a thousand volts nominal. So where we're prim primarily going to be focused on is going to be parts uh, one through four, just getting that general information. And then as long as you know where the specific type of our overcurrent protection is, it's easy enough to find that information afterwards. So what I mean is if you had a question on an exam about a circuit breaker, uh, you would know that you need to go to part seven of article 240 in order to find that specific information about a circuit breaker. So looking at our general requirements here, we have a list of circuits that must be protected. 240.4 A through G list protection requirements for different circuits. Uh, so for circuits under 800 amps, a next higher ampere rating can be selected. And for circuits over 800 amps, the next higher cannot be used. D1 through 7 list overcurrent protection for small conductors. So we have a couple different thoughts here on this slide. Uh, the first really important thing uh, probably the most important part of this lecture really is this idea of for circuits un under 800 amps and circuits over 800 amps. Uh, what we generally uh, give the rule of this to is that for branch circuits, generally speaking, uh, you're going to be going up to the next size overcurrent protection. And for feeder circuits, you're going to be going uh, you're going to be going down to the next standard. Uh, in the 2020 edition of the code, this is actually worded a little bit more clearly to mean that uh, as compared to the way it's laid out in the 2017 edition. But moving forward with this course, that's how we're going to be using this rule is that for branch circuits, we'll be going up to the next standard size. For feeders, we'll be going down. And what I mean by this is that if we do a load calculation, and we determine that we need a overcurrent protected device that is 22 amps in size. Uh, as we'll see a little bit later in the lecture, we don't have a overcurrent protected device for 22 amps. 
So if that were for a branch circuit, we could go up to 30 amps. However, if that were for a feeder circuit, we would have to go down to 20 amps for our overcurrent protected device. Uh, and then we have this idea down here at the bottom, D1 through 7, this overcurrent protection for small conductors. So this section is going to basically tell you that for a 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, and so on type wire, you can only have a maximum size overcurrent protected device of a certain size. Moving on from there, we're going to be taking a look at our flexible cord and cables. 240.5 A through B list protection requirements for flexible cords, cables, and fixture wires. Flex flexible cord must be in accordance with table 400.5 A1 and 2 and fixture wires per table 402.5. Fixture wires smaller than the branch circuit wiring may be tapped as permitted in 240.5 B2. Uh, so what this is referring to, for those of you that have installed a light fixture at this point in your uh, electrical career, uh, you may have noticed that for the majority of fixtures that you buy that have the wiring built into the fixture, there'll be a much smaller wire size than the branch circuit conductors that you're tapping off into in your home. Uh, so 240.5B2 here specifically uh, stating that that is permitted if it's in accordance with this specific rule. Moving on, uh, taking a look at our standard ampere ratings. Table 240.6A lists standard ampere ratings for fuses and fixed strip circuit breakers. Uh, table 240.6A is going to be another table like 310.15B16 that we covered in an earlier lecture that we're going to be repeatedly going back to over and over and over, and it's very important for you to understand how to use because 240.6A essentially tells us what size overcurrent protective device we're going to be using for a circuit. In addition to table 240.6A and the ratings listed in it, we have additional standard ratings of 1, 3, 6, 10, and 601 for fuses only. Uh, these sizes do not apply to circuit breakers. So here is our table 240.6A, standard ampere ratings for fuses and inverse time circuit breakers. This table is very straightforward. There's no figuring or cross-referencing to use it. It's just flat out a listing from smallest to largest of, a st of standard ampere ratings. Uh, so earlier when I gave our example, uh, I actually skipped over a 25 amp breaker or fuse in that example. Um, if we had calculated that we were going to be using a 22, uh, we needed two, 22 amps of overcurrent protection for a given type of circuit, depending on if that were a branch or a feeder circuit, we would go to this table and see that 22 amps is not a standard ampere rating. So we would have to either go down to 20 amps or up to 25 amps depending on what type of circuit that was once again. Uh, as I mentioned previously, this does go from least to, to largest. So we see it goes 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way down to 4,000, 5,000, and 6,000. Sticking with our general requirements here, we see system overcurrent devices. 240.15 A through B list overcurrent protection required for different circuits and systems. So B1 covers multi-wire branch circuits. B2 lists grounded single phase AC systems. B3, three and two phase systems. Part four, B4, three wire DC circuits. And 240.21B lists tap rules. B1 covers 10 feet or less. B2 for 25 feet or less. B3 for 25 feet or less supplying transformers. B4 for over 25 feet, and B5 for unlimited length. So two separate ideas here we have on the slide, this 240.15 A through B. So depending on what type of system it is we're providing overcurrent protection for, we're going to have different requirements for that overcurrent protection. So we have to establish what type of system we're working on or circuit, whether it be a multi-wire branch circuit, a grounded single phase or polyphase AC system and so on. And then our tap rules in 240.21B, 
won't be going into these tap rules a whole lot. It's just a little bit more advanced material, but I wanted everyone to at least understand where to find them at. Um, essentially, you think of a tap, the same idea with our fixture we talked about earlier, where you're making a joint or a splice at some point in that circuit and tapping off to go to something else. Uh, we have some specific requirements. Not per, I don't even per, per se like to call them requirements, but some specific rules that we can use when we're making a tap depending on how long those conductors are. So that's going to conclude our final lecture for Module 5. Our next session, we're going to be starting off in Module 6 with motor load calculations. <laughs>